back to Celebrity Radio. We're the number one reviewer of theatre in the UK and Las Vegas. We just sit 64 million minutes viewed on YouTube. And this week we're on the road with some others to have them. The UK tour by Guy Unsworth, based on the TV series by Raymond Allen, starring Joe Pasquale. As fast as go in 2020, they don't get any better than this. This is done on a big scale. It has a megastar who drives the whole thing and an ensemble cast who make the show look good. This show is all down to the writing, but it's also down to the stunts. Act 2 proves there's not a second wasted, with one laugh-out-loud piece of nonsense after the next. There's nobody better to do the role of Frank Spencer than Joe Pasquale, and the estate said there's only one man can and will ever do it, and that is Joe. The reason for that is he's instantly funny. He also has a tragedy about his performance at times and a pathos that Frank has on the TV. We need to feel sorry for him. We need to empathise with him. We can't just think he's an idiot, even though he probably is. You see, Frank Spencer means well. He's trying, but failing. He wants to succeed and impress, but we end up just laughing at him. Joe pulls this off magnificently. From the cock in the cupboard to the cameraman under the stairs, every gag in the book is in this show. There's the most beautiful bit of shtick as Joe falls down the stairs. It's quite incredible. To be fair, that scene alone is worth the ticket price. In Act 1, there's a beautiful bit by Joe, we'll call it Sleight of Hand, some of the most beautiful acting and comic timing that I've seen on the stage in years. Joe is truly a master. It's not all about Joe, though. Betty is played by Sarah Earnshaw and is perfect opposite Joe's Frank. She has a tenderness and a lovingness and a generosity that makes you instantly love her, like we did with the original Betty on TV some 50 years ago. Sadly, Mrs. Fisher was not played by Susie Blake tonight. She's been ill. That was taken by Jane Ashley, who did a great job. Murray Treadwell, David Shaw Parker and Ben Watson do a fantastic job driving the story. But let's face it, this show is about Frank Spencer and it is the Joe Pasquale show. His acting, his timing, his warmth, his pauses, they're all quite magnificent. As I say, act two is polished to within an inch of its life and some of the funniest scenes that you'll see on a stage this year. Nods to Guy Unsworth, who has written and directed this perfectly. The set is incredibly clever by Simon Higlett. Joe Pasquale literally gives his life over to stunt coordinator Kev McCurdy in this show. You do wonder how he pulls it off eight times a week. It's quite a remarkable performance. There's some beautiful patter routines where Joe just seems to prove he has an infinite memory for any amount of script. But it's his innate physicality that makes it so funny. He just is funny. But behind that funny is an incredibly clever and talented man who once again proves he's in a league of his own. I can't think of another actor who could pull this off as well. And we congratulate him and the team for starring in Some Mothers Do Have Them on tour through 2020. God, do we need a laugh right now. And this show is packed with them. Beautiful crafting, a stunning cast and a great night out in the theatre at a reasonable price too. Some mothers do have them at the glorious Theatre Royal Nottingham tonight going on tour through 2020. You've been listening to another five-star review by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz. Ta-da. When they said, would you come and do Some Mothers Do Have Them, did it take you more than about five seconds to say yes? It took me about two seconds, even though I was petrified of saying yes, because it's a huge boots to fill. You're talking about Michael Crawford, you're talking about Frank Spencer, an icon, one of the biggest sitcom characters in British history ever, and so well loved. And, you know, when he came back a couple of years ago and did something on Sport Relief, that was a bit that blew it out of the park. You know, everybody was waiting to see what Frank Spencer was getting up to. So to take it on is a huge, huge thing. And we made the decision very early on. We've been, we've been working on the script for two years now. We've done three workshops on it. And we discovered very early on the mistake to make would be to try and do an impression of Michael Crawford. So we threw that in the bin from day one and went, no, this is going to work. The reason it, it worked so so well before on telly was, I think, I've never met Michael Crawford, but looking at his early performances when he was in Hello, Dolly, that sort of stuff. And um, he did Condor Man as well for Disney, a movie called Condor Man. There's a lot of Frank Spencer in all of his early performances, which means there's a lot of Michael Crawford in it. Mm. This was before Michael uh, you know, even made Frank Spencer. So um, you can't emulate that and try and do an impression because it wouldn't be real. So the only way to make it real is to put me into Frank, and that's what we do. Working with someone like Joe, he can be a bit naughty from time to time and he does like to switch things up. Is it exciting to be part of a fast-paced, fast really, isn't it? Yes, uh, he has a massive, massive role. And I think that um, he would be 
taking a big risk if he went off piste, as it were. Um, by the way, um, this uh, play is going to be published by French's. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that wonderful? Um, yes, he has a lot of words uh, to say, and um, I think he would find it difficult to get back on the track again with a fast-moving farce, which this is really it's a love story okay i know he'll say that but it's also a farce and you can't really take time out to uh, have your own bit of fun on the side because you'd never get back on the train everybody else will have moved on yeah. it's a bit of a terrifying role in a way because you can't half sell it you've got to knock it out of the park eight times a week and i guess it's a triple threat of your performance match with the set looking good and the script being perfect any one of those things wrong it wouldn't work would it that's exactly it that is exactly it's, it's those three things you have to work. The, the the audience have to believe that i'm frank when I go through the door the only way they can believe that is for me to not act and so I don't there's no acting required for me I go out there and as you'll see when you watch the show tonight I'm myself out there with this and for some reason or another Frank Spencer fits me like a glove I don't act at all it's my life is it great I think the third week of rehearsal if you, or the second if you've got three weeks which we had you think well, why why did they cast me I'm never going to be able to you know this is impossible and you look at everybody else they're all so good and that's a great thing that moment where you realize that everybody's so good and you think well I hope I'm like them I hope that I can you know produce what they're producing um, and then the last week you will pull together and then the first night you know you're all holding hands and we've had a lovely time so far so long may it last and I've been talking to Joe for weeks and through the rehearsal and through opening night and all that, and it's always gone well. This show just feels right, doesn't it? Yes, yes, it's it's uh, a lovely feeling. I come on early for my entrances and stand in the wings like Mrs. Overall, um, <laughs> listening, because it's just, like, oh, 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 are they going to get this bit? Yes, 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 yes. And then they get something different, and that's the joy. The show's the same. It's the audience that's different. Uh, there's a lot of secrets in that set there, and I don't want to give anything away. But we were very lucky on day one of rehearsals, we were lucky to be able to play on the set. But it's so technically demanding this. Um, I had to learn the script before I got on day one of rehearsals. 130 pages of dialogue, I'm on 128 of them. So day one, it was great to come in and go, okay, what can we do? I knew the words. What can I get my head stuck in today? What can I fall over today? What can I break? What can I destroy in, in this whole you know performance that isn't already in the script and that's what we did we built it layer by layer by layer until we have this magnificent jigsaw of mayhem how dangerous is it i mean could you actually die during the show well strangely enough i won't give anything away <laughs> yeah uh, there was uh, very early on there's one the stunts are doing the second half which um works really well and it still works now but it was put together with metal spikes in to hold it in place. And if one of those metal spikes had gone out of place, that could have killed me if it had gone in the wrong place. So what we've done, we've got rid of the spikes now and using magnets, which I hate it when I'm the cleverest man in the room. If I'm the cleverest <laughs> man in the room, we're in trouble. But on that day, I was. I went, why are we doing this? What? Because if any one of these could hit me in the face or the jugular, I'm dead. They went, yeah, but it won't, will it? Well, it might do. You know, look, at this is the law of physics. No one knows where that's going to land or where I'm going to land. Okay, well, what do you want to do? Well, let's get rid of the spikes, shall we? And yeah, so we got rid of the spikes, magnets. I can still get hurt, but I don't think I'm going to die now. And it is a very physical role. I mean, you've done lots of parts over the years. Probably The Producers was a massive show that you're in, but this one particularly is pushing you on every level. The dialogue equaled with the physicality is a yeah. tough gig, isn't it? This is probably the, the hardest, but also the best thing I've ever done. You know, I, I say that with uh, complete conviction. The minute I come through the door, uh, hello Betty I'm home that's it the place goes up straight away and it's not for me it's, it's like almost like the audience put on a, a pair of slippers that they recognize and it's not it's not the voice because I don't do Michael's voice it's just that character suits me and uh, within a couple of minutes they believe it and it's it's uh it's just wonderful imagine going to work every day and being Frank Spencer imagine <laughs> if that was your day right <laughs> the joy of being Frank Spencer well you've got no responsibilities at all being Frank that's it